Well, my approach anyways is I think to look for where power exists, um, the subtleties. By power, I'm, I'm but also include prestige, you know, social, symbolic power, you know, cultural capital and so forth. And um, so I think that's the perspective I take on it. And, and uh, a daily life, everyday sociology, and try to build it up more structurally, uh, which becomes uh, you know, controlling material power in terms of money, you know, who owns what, mm -hmm. and so forth. So I think that's what drew, draw, draws me into sociology, what drew me into sociology a little bit more. Although I, um, I have a very social psychological perspective on that sense. The construction of that in daily life through how people interact with each other. And that includes how they feel about each other. It's not just words and actions. It's has some aspect of internal in there. Um, emotion, anger, love. That's my orientation is to try to look for that. I try to focus on social problems, but it's also social goods is the kind of class that I'm teaching now in quality of life. Uh, takes more of that perspective, which is a bit more challenging because it's easy to, in some ways, easy to focus on social problems. Um, so I think sociology has a lot to say about social problems. Um, that's relevant, that gets lost sometimes. And the most interesting things that we have to say don't, don't make it into the newspaper. Um, and it's subtle. And I think it requires you to sit down and think for a while. So it's challenging. You get a sense of mastery of the tools and the techniques of how to do social sociology gradually over time as you use them. You can actually forget if you don't use, use them. But, um, so that's it's an exciting area in that sense that you're always feeling challenged. This, uh, it's multidisciplinary. Uh, there's a lot of different kinds of sociology and, and they don't always agree. I teach three undergraduate classes, and um, I teach a grad class in health. The undergraduate class is on health, but when I teach health, I don't teach health care. We split those up into two groups: health care versus health and illness. And I focus on health and illness. Health and the illness class is really, I think, I, I think a big part of it is what are people's experiences uh, with trying to stay healthy, and when they're ill. And I try to take in consideration some of other people around them to experience. What's it like for family members? What's it like for doctors to treat uh, people with certain kinds of illnesses? And uh, it's all part of an interest in suffering. We should all be interested in suffering <laughs> and the extent of it in the world. And so health is a particular kind of suffering. It's sort of like it's labeled more and more things get labeled as health issues, which is somewhat problematic. Um, you know, we, I was talking to a grad student the other day, you know, anger, that's health, that's mental health, you know, it's not all of it is. So uh, I, I teach these classes, and as I mentioned, it's um, it's a changing topic. There's lots that it's always happening. The other uh, the other classes I teach sort of pivot off of that. The quality of life class is, um, is on the positive side of things, and it helps to expand out, you know, towards happiness, growth, flourishing, um, but it raises a lot of very different issues um, than the health class uh, that are very challenging and it becomes more political because that fits with an economic and a political science perspective on what governments should be doing um, in terms of promoting economic growth, right, instead of in terms of addressing social problems with the health class does. And the other class uh, I teach is an emotions class. And emotions, it comes out of my interest in health, health and mental health. Um, but that has a lot of philosophy and biology connections that the other, the other ones don't. They're, I mean, obviously health and biology is, you know, you have a disease, cancer or something. But here we're talking about how, does, how do people process their emotions and the information, what's the relationship between thinking and emotion. And so that's a fourth year seminar. And that depends very much on uh, who's in that class, right? So it's a small seminar. What a seminar is, is that you, you know, that's a place where I don't come in with lectures and I come in prepared to talk about things and try to challenge students to think about them. And some do and some don't. Some just sit there and, and that's unfortunate. Um, people aren't taking charge of their education. But the idea is to provide some challenging um, 
you know, at the, at the most complex level, readings, what's taking place right now in these areas, but that's a fairly new area, um, you know, past 20 years, it's really exploded. So that's also changing. So I, I find, uh, you know, teaching takes a lot of time and effort, but those three areas you know, take up a lot of my time, but they're interesting.